Welcome to the Industry Born Podcast. I'm Colin Reichart, your host, and today we'll be covering almost anything related to cannabis. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good, Colin. How are you doing? Uh, I'm well, man. I'm well. It's uh, always crazy. Well, life is always crazy, and everything going on around you makes it crazier. But yeah, doing good. Yeah, tell me about it. Good. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, exciting stuff for you, right? I mean, you're, you're uh, launching, well, you've launched a new, uh, a new venture in, uh, in Uruguay, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we're, we've actually been here in Uruguay for um, four years now. Uh, I came here nice. together with my wife uh, and co-founder, Andrea, uh, four years ago after spending four years before that in, in California. Um, that's right. I was working with Flo Canna for a while as head of operations, right. and, and then after that, spent some time living on one of the farms in, in Humboldt County, uh, doing a bit more around the cultivation and just living the life in the uh, you know off the grid in the mountains up there. It's pretty crazy off the grid life up there. You know, I find that so interesting that um, the heart of this industry. Uh, I meet people and they're like, "Yeah, I've got my off the grid palace," and they mean like off the grid. <laughs> They have to totally, come totally. to town to use the internet and stuff. I'm like, how on, how is that even functional? But that's uh, it's very true. Were you that far off the grid when you were there? Uh, yeah, I mean, so we, we were in Southern Humboldt in Bembo, um, working at a at a farm called Elpenglo Farms. Um, there, I think yeah. one of the, one of the few farms that's still going, uh, still operating in in the legal market in California. And um, yeah, we spent about just over six months there, um, just you know, learning the art of cultivation, doing a few experiments. We had access to some really interesting genetics up there. Learned how to do some extractions. Experimented on myself. I have um, psoriasis and arthritis, uh, and you know, saw some really interesting results with that. Sometimes I, I kind of overdid it a bit and just you know couldn't get out of bed for for about twenty four hours. But that really uh, you know kind of planted the seed. Excuse the pun for um, you know what what became our next venture and really been inspired by that. And sure. that's when uh, my wife and I decided that we wanted to start something together in, in cannabis and live a life like we were living there. That was you know kind of off the grid and a bit more in touch with nature um, and having yeah. access to these these natural products and you know help myself and, and many others. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I grew up. Um... I personally grew up, my mom and dad were uh, hippies in the hippie culture. And so we <laughs> traveled a bit and lived a little bit of that. Uh, uh, we didn't, we actually live, we live kind of from place to place more and in some uh, large community housing stuff like that, like like homes where people, a lot of people would live in one home. We were like the only kids ever. So uh, I'm sure everybody hated Ooh. the fact that my mom and dad were moving in because of two little kids running around all over the place. But um uh, I, I just just making mention of the fact that I did a little bit of the travel and lived a little bit of a different lifestyle. Now I'm pretty corporate. I don't know if I I don't know that I could uh, <laughs> off grid it as well. But I mean, I'm looking at your place and the pictures you guys have posted. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I guess um, the place you're, you're referring to is probably um, our our new uh, I guess EV home uh, here in Uruguay. It's in a uh, a place called Garzon. Um, which is just off the Atlantic coast, uh, about oh, wow. 45 minutes inland, uh, about three hours away from where I am now. I'm currently in Montevideo, which is the capital of Uruguay. Uh, and that property, um, our partners, in, investor partners purchased last year. Um, uh, the property was actually, it, it used to belong to a Argentinian celebrity. Uh, her name is Susana Jimenez. She's very, quite famous in, in Argentina. Um, and, uh, so that we purchased the property from them with the idea of creating this, uh, wellness center. Um, so it has a beautiful, beautiful, huge house, which the idea is to convert into a, uh, uh a little boutique hotel and probably we'll add nice. a few other little units around it, little domes or, or cabins. And the idea is to create the first cannabis wellness center in Latin America where, you know, visitors will come from all over and, and partake in different wellness type activities like yoga and meditation, um, and all with, you know, with cannabis, uh, we still got to work a little bit on the regulation because currently in Uruguay, cannabis is actually not available to tourists and visitors only to, uh, Uruguayans and, and residents. So we're, we're working on really? that bit, but, um, yeah, yeah. Which is, it's a bit strange. I don't know why the, uh, you know, Ur Uruguay government just never thought about that bit, but, uh, we think that there's a good chance of that changing this year. And then the other part of the project is also, um, we, we set up a medical THC cultivation there. Um, so we, we just started that pilot production and 
we're going to do our first harvest in uh, at the end of April. And hopefully the idea there is to export those flowers either to Europe, uh, Israel or Australia as medical products um, for yeah. kind of, you know, for smoking, um, uh, for, for patients that actually have uh, licenses to access medical cannabis. So you have you have licensure to grow and and to export. Yeah, actually, uh, right now in Uruguay, um, the medical producers can only export the flour. We can actually sell it really? here in Uruguay, which is crazy. Yeah, even though Uruguay has a recreational <laughs> market as well, and you know, there's, it's full of flowers. But on the medical right? side, we can't sell it. Uh, we can't sell it here. What? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the United States, man. <laughs> uh, you think you guys got it bad there? It's uh, yeah, oh, it's crazy here too. County, county to county, the sense. rules changed. Really, that's really interesting, though. Right. I mean, and I think that you know, I we talk about this a lot in, in different aspects of it because even as a manufacturer of equipment, we run into regulatory issues, and you never know what you're going to run into, especially with banking and stuff here in the United States. But um, right, that's kind of the pitfalls of being in this business. You know, is that you know. Um, you got to educate yourself. It's your responsibility to know what you can and cannot do in that environment. You can't just like pick up and go, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to move my my jam from here to there." <laughs> you got to make sure that the rules remain the same from here to there. And I think uh, that's what's really confusing a lot of a lot of people in this business and making it very difficult, honestly, uh, to, to to do yep. business consistently. But. Totally, totally. I mean, you know, startups, uh, startups in general are, are tough and, you know, super challenging. But yeah. yeah, with the cannabis industry, it's a whole other level just with the, uh, the regulations and the uncertainty, you know, especially for us on the medical side, uh, you know, outside of the US, we, we've got this whole kind of other international medical markets. And uh, just like in California or in the US, the regulations change per county or per city. Uh, obviously, in the, on an international level, the regulations change per, per country. Um, and it's super confusing, super challenge, challenging to navigate all those those regulations. Um, I mean, we before we started this THC cultivation, we were actually growing CBD or hemp, which in Uruguay is actually different to the United States. Here in Uruguay, hemp is considered up to 1% THC, whereas in the US, it's, it's 0.3%. Um, and so we were able to export it, but we were actually only able to export it to one country, which was Switzerland, uh, because they have the same definition of hemp as 1% THC. Um, and they have an interesting market where um, they sell hemp flowers there as an alternative to tobacco. Um, and so that kind of market okay. opened up for us. But that was the only market available for Uruguayan hemp flour. Um, and so that, you know, that, that presented a whole lot of challenges in itself. But, but yeah, it's super, super challenging. We have the same issues actually with the banks, thanks to the United States uh, federal uh, you know, legislations because Go all the USA. banks here in Latin America are yeah connected to to u.s banks and so no banks here will will touch cannabis um so yeah that, oh that keeps God. things interesting yeah no no kidding well um i think it's interesting i mean we were we're of course obviously very interested in the development of uh of cannabis market in in south america it makes sense with mexico being right here and you know obviously very fertile ground all the way down i mean traditionally there's been a lot of cannabis grown um, you know, throughout the South America. So it's like, to me, uh, and it just makes sense, right? But <laughs> here we are trying to export us, I was in Green Bros, exporting equipment down south <laughs> when the traditional movement of cannabis associated stuff is, uh, you know, northward. But um, I think it's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, we, because we were just down in, in Costa, Costa Rica and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, create a bulwark, a little bit of a, a poke in to see, you know, to establish business. Right. And that, and that's, mm -hmm. that's always what we're trying to do is just trying to figure out, well, how do we, how do we connect with, with the, the markets? And especially when you're talking about all the regulatory issues that, that farmers and producers are dealing with. And, and, uh, that's, it's challenge after challenge after challenge, right. Um, international commerce is tough anyway. <laughs> it's okay when they order online, Right, because <laughs> then you just right. send it to them. You're like, ah, no deal. But not if you're going to go do business there, right? Like if you're going to go and establish a a a, a presence in a, in, a, in another country, you're dealing with all kinds of craziness. So that's yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, there's huge huge cultural differences. Um, I mean, just me, for example. Obviously, I, I came here four years ago. Um, I never lived in Latin America before. I didn't understand the language when I first got here. Uh, you know, for the first two years, I was totally on another planet uh, i'm lucky that my my <laughs> wife and co-founder she's she's uruguayan so you know we would 
have meetings at the beginning and then she would give me a little 20 minute uh um just you know summary debrief. of what what yeah debrief <laughs> of what, what we actually spoke about um but yeah it's it's, it's super challenging there's, there's a whole set of, of of challenges uh you know cultural challenges and being being sure. different countries and it's uh it's interesting actually we're um so with with this new thc cultivation that we're doing in, in the property there in garçon we're uh we decided to outsource the the drying and processing with another company that actually um recently just purchased a greenbro greenbro's uh trimming uh, i'm not sure which which yes. one it was but yeah we'll be we'll be processing with oh, awesome. uh, with you guys mm. that's great i appreciate that a lot um i find it very interesting to to to, to know that we're there, you know, I, I started my company in my garage in 2000, uh, I don't know, 12, maybe. Yeah. 2012. Right. We're 10 years this year. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but 2012. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, I think that, uh, that to me, that was kind of never, you know, I had this vision of, of, of like what this thing could be, but never really like the details of that vision just don't, they don't, you know, it's coming, but it doesn't look the same as my vision. My vision wasn't nearly as detailed, I guess, is what it comes down to. So I right. had no idea yeah. of thinking about being in, you know, in, in South America in any ex- to any extent, or we're in South Africa to any extent, you know, we're in Israel, we're in, you know, we're all over the world. And it's like, wow, this is, this is magna- magnificent in, the, in its growth. And it's just so big and awesome. It's become such a... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's such a movement. I don't know. That's what it is. It's a movement. It's the For legalization sure. of, of cannabis, and it's na- right. it's not just national, it's global. It's kind of crazy. Uh, That's really considering. Awesome. I mean, not, not too long ago, and still, you know, not too long ago in in, in this country, well, uh, and still in this country, we have people in jail for it. But I mean, you know, and still people. Yep. I mean, still people be getting busted for it. So it's really interesting to see this really. Right. You know, to see people like you building companies all over the place, all over the world now, uh, around this product. And, you know, um, I don't know. I think yeah. it's cool. It's a cool thing. To do For sure. That. No, cannabis is definitely something special. I think it has that effect on, on people, you know, it definitely provides that, that push, that motivation. Uh, I mean, I often say it's the, the, the cause of my stress and, and the cure of my stress as well, but, uh, right. hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, um, but no, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's big things happening in, in South America and, and, you know, a lot of potential for, for companies great. like you guys, um, recently Colombia just, just changed their legislation where they're going to allow exports yeah. uh, of medical flour also. And so, you know, I think all the companies will be now changing their, their systems to, as opposed to just producing flour and biomass for extractions, but now producing yeah. actually flour for smoking. And that's, you know, where, where I think, uh, your, your equipment can come in real handy for that. It's really, yeah, that's a really big change. It's really interesting. I think, um, and uh, we, we did, a I, I did a whole series of podcasts with, um, with guys up in, uh, in Humboldt this year and they're, they're struggling so much, you know, um, that, you know, Humboldt cannabis is some of the best cannabis in the world. If not, some people would tell you it's absolutely the best. Um, but sun grown Humboldt sure. cannabis is what it is. It's just like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something different than anything else. Right. And then, uh, but they have nowhere to go and they're getting crushed and the market is just destroying them because, yeah. uh, the commerce setup or the taxation, from California and the regulation from California and then the inability to export. Like here you are, it, you, you can't sell it in your local area, but you can export it and we can export. Like, are you kidding me? Right. Like there's a global marketplace for this and this is some of the best in the world and why wouldn't you be able to export? Well, you know, the Canadians yeah. are doing it. They're not having any problem at all. Uh, the stinky Canadians <laughs> are taking over the world in cannabis. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they've got right. their feet in uh, their hands in every little cannabis adventure all the way through the, the whole of South America. Those guys are killing it. But, yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of Canadian capital uh, here in Uruguay as well in, in all of um, Latin yeah. America. Although I think there's, there's been a lot of lessons learned from uh, a lot of those um, initial investments made in, in, you know, from Canadian companies, but, but yeah, just, just going back to, to Humboldt. I mean, um, you know, we obviously my experience working with, with Flocana and working with the small farms yeah. up in Mendocino and, and Humboldt, that was really the inspiration uh, for us of what we did here. You know, when we started here in Uruguay uh, three, three and a half years ago, um, our goal was to create a, a network of small family farms that are producing, you know, small batch and, and high quality cannabis that we right. could, you know, sell locally and export. Um, and, uh, you know, we're still working on that model. Uruguay for us is, is kind of the, the laboratory in that sense. Uh, and the idea is then to replicate that model in, in other countries in Latin America, especially where there is such a, a rich history and culture of, of small family cannabis growing, yeah. such as Colombia, Mexico, 
uh, you know, we'll, we'll look to Argentina in, in the next couple of years as well as, as regulations take shape there. But, but yeah, you know, it all, it all came from, from Humboldt. Uh, and I'm still in touch with a lot of those guys up there. And I know they're, they've been going through some really challenging times. And I really hope, you know, things improve for them. Um, it's, it's a tough Here's industry. A tough, and we're all, I mean, we all have our problems. Different, different. Yeah. Yeah. We all do. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to see it, you know, when, in a market, when a market is so hungry for product like this one is, and you have demand, you have supply, but you can't use that supply and, and you can't redistribute because of regulation, um, even amongst deregulated states or, or decriminalized states or legalized states, you, you know, you can't cross boundaries. And it's, it's just such a nightmare um, um, from a commerce perspective. And I remember I, I was there with Flocana when they started their um, their model. And I remember that, you know, yeah. the, the vision of the model, I always thought that was really powerful what they were trying to do. And and uh, the the launching party when they opened up, I was there for that. We outfitted the you know most of the equipment in that facility for the, for the initial phase right. there, and um, right. you know and and uh, have worked with through with them throughout their growth as well. And and I just I mean, it it's such a difficult model to make because ultimately you know ultimately you you have all this commerce that has to take place and all this money has to be made to support this organization and that requires this chunk right and then you're still trying to feed the farmers which require this chunk and then when the market presses right. down that he gets squeezed it's really tough and i know it's i know it's killing them yeah. up there right now i mean yeah. it's uh, just yeah. uh, what well, did i mean two what was it two years ago in oregon i mean cannabis was uh you know 300 bucks a pound so i mean that's what we're seeing now in california so uh right. it's not right. like it's unheard of it's just not uh it's just not fun you know, to watch yeah. these guys go through yeah. it and know what they're struggling yeah. with. But. For sure, for sure. And I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the same. We're, we're seeing uh, a lot of similar patterns on, a, on an international level, uh, you know, as what, what California is kind of like 15 years ahead of us, uh, you know, here. Yeah. And so we, we kind of look to that market to sort of predict, you know, and, and see what, what, what trends, is, what's going to kind of happen there. And, you know, sure. we're still very much in the, the early phases here in, in, in South American production where it's just, well, I guess specifically Uruguay, we're only focused on flour right now, um, just getting to, to extractions. There's like one or two companies that are setting up laboratories, extraction laboratories, but still very much focused on just your THC, CBD, you know, nothing else. That's kind of what the, yeah. the international market is demanding. And um, yeah, prices, prices are falling. Hemp, hemp prices, you know, when we, we first did our first commercial harvest in 2020 and uh, we, you know, we managed to sell our CBD hemp flowers to Switzerland for around uh, $350 a kilo. Um, and, you know, this year, pff, prices were absolutely slashed, went down to maybe 150 uh, a kilo, you know. And, and so just constantly trying to work out, you know, how to kind of make it work. And I think, you know, obviously this is a, a long-term uh, industry. You know, it's definitely not a sprint and it's, it's going to take a, a few years to get figured out. But I... I definitely feel one thing that I learned in California that that is um, that at the end of the day it's it's the brands you know you got to develop a brand and and uh, that yeah. that obviously takes a long time. Right now in the international arena, there's there really is no brands. Uh, it's kind of yeah. just like you know people will take whatever they can get a hold of, whatever kind of um, uh, complies with the the restrictions, the, all the, the the standards, the pharmaceutical and medical standards, and yeah. you know is is good quality. Um, it, it goes, um, uh, but but at the end of the day. Yeah, we definitely want to position ourselves and, and create a brand where that brand is really based on the, the unique model that we're trying to create and the, the social and environmental impact that it creates. And so, you know, that these sure. consumers have an idea of where their medicine comes from and, you know, kind of this full transparency along the supply chain. But are, it's going to take time, you know, the, in the meantime. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah, no, no, I was going to say, like, you know, in the meantime, it's it's just about surviving uh, until mm -hmm. things really open up. Like you said, you know, it's uh, we know the demands there, but it's just really hard to get to that demand, and, you know, through all the regulation mm -hmm. and red tape. It is. And, uh, and I think, that you know, you make it, though. I mean, it, you, just, you know, you know, you're obviously accustomed to hard work. That's all it really comes down to. You know, you're going right. to work at something. You might as well do something you love. And if you love it, then it it's an easier burden to bear right so just keep your nose down sure. and keep going i think is is the secret to the whole deal but um right uh, i i i think that the the uh shift in global market is uh is a little slower than i was expecting it to be but 
um, it for us it's massive challenge after massive challenge after massive challenge because we have to meet regulatory compliance you know um, we while we meet regulatory compliance within the United States there is no governing body that says okay well here's your sticker <laughs> for cannabis equipment so we're like ah you know so right. we know what we're doing we, we build XYZ to be to meet standards and then you go overseas and they're like, well, yeah, okay, well, you need to get certified in this. And you're like, well, wait, I can do that over there, but I can't do it here. You know, so it's just like, okay, all right, we'll figure it out, you know, but that's what we're doing, banging our head against the wall uh, on on a regular basis, trying to figure out how you play the game and in different locations and keep going. And, you know, thankfully we do have a good brand um, and brand is key. Um, It does save you, you know, through the hard times. Um, It's really, it's really hard, I think, to, to be a, um, a cannabis brand as far as uh, a flower brand or something. I think that's a much harder lift. Like we're very fortunate. There's just not that many players uh, here. So we have a better, we have a smaller pond, but you guys are dealing with a really big pond. Uh, You know? Tell me about it. That's tough, man. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I think it's cool. uh, Yeah. Yeah. No, I guess, um, you know, we always talk about here how that, you know, the people that kind of, are making it and uh, giving a real go at it right now in the cannabis industry are the guys that are like yourselves, you know, providing the, the, the equipment kind of like in the gold rush, you know, that we're doing the, uh, setting yeah. the shovels and the picks, um, not, not the guys that are actually looking for the gold. Um, and I think that's kind of the holds true a bit here where we're really yeah, the, the producers, the cultivators, and, you know, still struggling, struggling to sell, struggling to find those markets, yeah. but it's the, the services and the, the equipment and the machinery, uh, that that's really kind of, uh, you know, doing, doing nicely now, but, I have faith. I, I think things will change. Hopefully, yeah. I'm just going to kind of stick at it. Yeah, I, I hope yeah. so. I mean, I, that was one of the things that was so optimistic. I thought was optimistic about the Flocana model was that, you know, they were really, really trying. I mean, it was a little bit altruistic in, in some sense and maybe not mm-hmm. 100 percent realistic. But, you know, they're really trying to create an opportunity for the small producer to still be relevant. Mm-hmm. And um you know, I remember when we were, I was having brand conversations and marketing conversations with people uh, at some of the bigger, you know, investment conferences, um, ArcView and stuff like that. People would talk about these ideas of going up and going into Humboldt and teaching people how to brand and how to market. And I'm just like, okay, that's great. And, you know, you're going to get one or two guys that can actually pull this off, but that's a yeah. massive yeah. undertaking. Branding and marketing is a huge cost to a growing company, you know. And if you're sure. if you're so busy doing the things that you're that you're trying to do that you and then to take energy, money especially, uh, out yeah. and go, oh, we're just gonna we're gonna focus this on on the internet. <laughs> we're gonna go spend this right. out on the internet for what? <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, and no. so like, you know, and, and not everybody's fortunate enough to have a have a, a, a kick ass, uh, you know, a social media guy uh, uh, or has a, you know, it can be a buzz brand person themselves, you know, so you, it's really right. tough. And I, I just I remember thinking like, God, that's going to be so hard for the average guy to really, yeah. really, really brand himself um, because, you, you, you know, there's just not there's just it's just not first of all he doesn't make enough product to get from here to new york right so he just yeah. there's just not that breadth it's like how do you do it and and uh, cuz there's so many people so many people in it right. and that's why i thought Kana had this great concept of like you know yeah. uh of bringing that together and kind of giving like being that per being that portion that could could bolster that that uh that that um uh, that that pillar of their companies, right? Well, we're going to be able to bring to market. We're going to be able to give you an opportunity to get you into market. And I think that's what I thought was so exciting uh, when it started. So I thought that was cool. And that's what caught my attention. You know, when you, when, when, uh, uh, when, when you showed up, uh, when your bio showed up, I'm like, yeah, okay. So you, you're familiar with that. Um, But Mm -hmm. so just to kind of let everybody know if if you're listening, uh, the flow kind of market market marketing model is, is very interesting and very unique, and, and it's something that you should take a look at. I, I highly recommend taking a peek at it. Uh, I don't know about its success at this point or or how it's doing. I, I won't make any comments on that, but I, I did think it was very interesting as it started. And Kevin, you're kind of uh, mentioned that. I mean, you're you're thinking about a similar type of structure where you are now, and some some sort of kind of collaborative way of bringing the Uruguay market, if you will, to be bigger or more well represented. 
Is that, is that what I got? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so yeah, we're definitely, you know, inspired by that model uh, that Flo Canna set up in, in, in the Emerald Triangle, working with the small farms, helping them participate in this new industry. That was really the, the idea behind what we were also trying to do here in, in Uruguay. So, you know, we built a network of small farms. Obviously, the big difference is that here in Uruguay, there is no history or culture of, of cannabis growing or underground right. cannabis growing. You know, no one, it's, most of the, the black market cannabis was imported from Paraguay and other Latin American countries. Um, but, you know, you do have a history, a, a culture here of, of agriculture, tons of, of little yeah. small family farms that, you know, are all just kind of, you know, struggling to, to get by. Um, and here all of a sudden you have a, a cash crop, uh, you know, yeah. that's obviously worth a lot more than any kilo of tomatoes or, or, or potatoes or, right. or whatever it is. Um, and so, you know, we kind of looked at creating this model where we, we do all the, the, the challenging stuff where we, the licenses, we'll do the licensing parts. We, we uh, source the genetics. Um, then we have a team of, of agronomists that basically have a whole process of uh, selecting farms um, and then helping them through the process of getting everything ready, preparing their farms uh, for the growing and accompanying them all the way through providing trainings, uh, audits, um, helping to implement the international certifications that's needed in order to, to wow. then uh, uh, sell the product overseas. Um, and then obviously we help with the, the harvests and, and we do all the, the post harvest, take it to a, a, a centralized processing and then we're responsible for the commercialization. Um, you know, definitely had, had also had its challenges. Um, still working mm -hmm. on, on developing that model, but um, you know, really the, like I mentioned before, the objective there is to, to kind of perfect that here and then replicate and adapt it to, to other Latin American countries where, where there is sure. that, um, that, that strong culture of, of small cannabis farms. Um, but yeah, you know, also learning from the, the flow canna model, it's, 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 it's altruistic and it's, you know, we, we, we want to create that, that social impact that it can create, but it's just yeah. given market conditions, it's, it's not easy. It isn't easy. And, um, you know, the market will rebound and of course it'll balance as it always does. And, uh, the question is just yeah. like, are, uh, can you hang on through that, through the tough times? I mean, we, we've been through exactly. it last year was, was, um, you know, it was challenging for sure. But, you know, you, at the end of the day, you have to evaluate, uh, uh, you have to evaluate it from a different perspective. And I love what I do. So, okay. So it was hard, whatever, move on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it yeah. Out. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> totally. I have my moments where, you know, I definitely <laughs> ask myself, like, you know, what am I doing in this, in the industry? Is, yeah. this, is this all worth it? Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, I can't really imagine myself doing anything else. Um, so, yeah. you know, and it's, it's great. It's a, I mean, a family business now, uh, you know, I'm working very closely with, with my wife on this, uh, you know, we're, That's we're right. in this, we're, we're, we're together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most people ask us, you know, how the hell can we, we actually do that? We have two small right. little kids, uh, three year old boy, and another nine month old. So you just, you know, had another kid that last year and that whole balancing act between, you know, work and, uh, uh, and family is, is super challenging. Plus at the same time, trying to just focus on my health, um, you know, which obviously with, with stress kind of triggers, uh, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the autoimmune condition. So, you know, that's, that's kind of another thing. And that's, that's in a way, um, is, is what we're trying to bring into creating this brand. Um, so we, we kind of developed this concept called life better lived, uh, where that, yeah. that, that concept of a life better lived, uh, is divided into three pillars, if you like. Um, and the three pillars are health. Uh, you know, our physical health and, and mental health, which, you know, we obviously need to be paying a lot more attention to that. Um, nature, just, just being, you know, that more interaction with nature, being around nature more. Obviously, when, when I was out working in Humboldt and, you know, every day just being you know, yeah. the, the, the fresh mountain air, putting my hands in the soil, working with the plants, I was feeling absolutely amazing, you know, and most, most healthy I felt in a long time. Uh, and then the third pillar is that that balance between work and uh, and family. You know, trying to to find that balance, and it's sure. it's it's something that my wife and I are are still working on with our own lives. You know, trying to to find that, and yeah. it's we're trying to kind of build that that brand based on our own uh, search for 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 a life better lived. That's great, man. I mean, I think the concept is perfect, right? I mean, uh, people talk about I, I've I've had people talk about like work life balance and and all that stuff, and I'm like, you know there's people like me who work in life are very, are very much the same thing, you know, I, cause I enjoy what I do so much. So my balance is trying to find something that, um, that I can decompress from 
what 90% of my life is, which is this, right? So it's not, you know, it's not like I balance these work and life. That's like, that's it. That's what I am. And then, but I still, there's still a need to, to, to counter, uh, counterbalance a little bit, you know, um, get away from, from this. Cause some of my best, my best progressive thoughts and and things come, come outside of this. Like uh, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, got it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> ah, I got to run into work. Like, oh man, six more hours. Okay. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, I think it's I think it's really yeah. cool that you're that you're kind of focusing on that. It sounds like um, sounds like a good thing to be uh, engaged in. Absolutely. So your name or your company hmm. is the name of the company is uh, is EV EV Life Sciences, um, and EV actually it means Earth or, or Planet Earth in Guarani which is a, a native language here in, in South America. Okay. It's actually uh, still a spoken language in Paraguay and, and kind of was also down here in, in different parts of Argentina and, and Uruguay. And, you know, that was also something we, we tried to kind of reflect in, in the company is sort of, you know, the native nativeness being a part of the company and the simplicity. Um, but yeah, so right now we're, we're in Uruguay, um, but we're actually now part of a, a larger regional holding company uh, called Terra Floss that was uh, started by our uh, our main investor, his name is Facundo Garreton. Um, he's actually an ex uh, an ex national senator of, of Argentina, um, also a tech and entrepreneur. Very cool guy, nice. um, great partner. And so yeah, he set up this this regional holding company where that has a a number of different portfolio companies underneath, including us, EV. Uh, there's another company called Blueberries Medical, which is in Colombia, um, and another company right. called Doctor Gea, uh, which is it's an Argentinian company, but they recently launched in, in Colombia. And the idea of the holding is that it's all the different uh, portfolio companies focus on a specific part of the supply chain. So with us, EV, we're yeah. focused on the, the cultivation and the genetics. The Colombian company is focused on the extraction. Um, the other, Dr. Gea, they're a, kind of like a, a software platform that helps to connect patients, doctors, uh, and pharmacies, compound pharmacies. Um, and also providing right. education for, for patients and doctors. And then they're looking for a couple of other um, investments actually in Brazil and Mexico, which are another two key strategic markets in, in Latin America. And the idea is yeah. that you know each company focuses on a, a different segment and they all look for synergies with each other, uh, you know, working together right. to kind of complete the, uh, the, the vertical integration, if you like. Um, so That's awesome. yeah, it's been really cool working great. with uh, different entrepreneurs from different Latin American companies and, you know, just kind of uh, looking for those, those synergies with everybody. To, to, to make it just that much more difficult. I get it. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Why, why would you do it? The, why would you do it the easy way? Let's just <laughs> get it all. So, right. uh, so uh, it's funny that, I mean, what did, so I know that uh, initially Columbia was doing um, extraction only and I, and you said something about them doing flour now, but what do you, what kind right. of extraction are they, are you guys doing? Are you guys working? Um, on this, this company in, uh, so blueberries, they have a, a CO2 supercritical uh, extraction. Um, and yeah. they're, they're actually, yeah, creating final products, mostly tinctures, uh, you know, right now it's just the, the market yeah. is, is very much focused yeah. on tinctures, nothing like nothing more sophisticated than that. Uh, and most of the time it's, it's CBD because um, T or hemp, if you like, THC products are still just, there's just so much regulation around it. It's really hard to actually get yeah. THC products out there, yeah. especially with the oils. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so they're, they're creating these little little tinctures, um, selling it in the local markets. I think in Colombia, they have a, a slightly different regulation where they can sell products as either cosmetics or sort of medical products, if you like. Um, and then they're also looking yeah. to export. One of the biggest challenges Latin America has is that, you know, right now, uh, the industry in Latin America, it's still, it's, it's still coming along. It hasn't quite been developed. It's, it's, it's moving nicely in Colombia and Uruguay are, are big players in terms of production. But in terms of the, the consumption, uh, it's, still, it's still not there. And you know, the big, big markets still haven't come into play yet, like Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And so that's why a lot of the, yeah. the companies in Latin America are looking to export to Europe, where obviously things are, are moving at a lot faster pace there. But the problem there is that to comply with European standards is really tough. Um, yeah. You know, they yeah. a lot of the European markets require what we call EU GMP, which is yeah. super super tough to 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 get. I mean, you probably know that about that really well because yeah. it really kind of connects to the the drying and processing part of things. Yeah. Um, sure. And so you know, yeah, we're all, all looking for kind of ways how we can like okay, if we 
we try and process here in a you know GACP certifications or a local GMP, yeah. but this local GMP is not necessarily recognized in, in Europe. Uh, is there a way we can maybe send it over somewhere in Europe, get it kind of reprocessed uh, under EU GMP, and then all of a sudden it qualifies as EU GMP so we can sell to that market. So it's right. it's super challenging in that sense. It is. It's very and then those technical those technical details between those different certifications is where the you know the devil's in the details as they say. That's where that's where it really can become because you you feel like you're you've reached this place where <laughs> you've you've reached this compliance level and then you're all of a sudden thrown into uh, this extra a- added burden. And you know the right. reality. I think the biggest reality of it is that you know we're. We're throwing and GMP is is very focused on pharmaceutical grade kind of quality of stuff and um, yep. you know potentially GMP. I mean, it is for all intents and purposes if you manufacture consumables, right? Um, yeah. Although I don't think a Twinkie line is ever going to be a GMP product, but that <laughs> that's beside the point. Anyway, uh, but but when you're talking about something that you wanted to have that has a, the 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 capabilities and functional capabilities of cannabis, you know, obviously. Uh, they're going to push for that heavier level, heavier level of uh, of regulation, and um, you know we get people all the time. Hey, you know, G- are you GMP? Well, we are not, and we but mm-hmm. our machines are very functional within a GMP facility because they all right. meet the requirements that you need from the equipment. Um, so there's a little yeah. bit of a and even in the in the culture itself, there's a little bit of misunderstanding about what it actually means, right? So who needs to be certified? What is certified? How is and, and then how it's certified? And then like you said, if you go from this certification level does it do anything for you or do you have to i mean because i can't imagine honestly like growing <laughs> outdoor cannabis i don't know how you would get it to gmp right you know what i mean like it's it, right. it's it's such a lift there's so much involved indoor i can totally understand but when you look at yeah. the, the, the the regulation around outdoor i can't even imagine how you would do it but yeah yeah that was anyway, uh... a challenge yeah. yeah, yeah. No, for us, that was uh, one of the, the big challenges, you know, because right now with the international industry, especially here in Latin America and Europe, it's very much medical is, is almost pharma, you know, equivalent to pharma. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, we and then we come from, you know, how things are done in, in Humboldt in California, sun yeah. grown where, you know, you really uh, get the full reflection of the terpenes and, 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 and cannabinoids you know, under the sun, the Californian sun within that amazing soil. Um, yeah. But we weren't actually able to do that here for for medical productions because the the you know first of all the yeah. standardization of, of the plants are completely different in an outdoor uh, outdoor setting. Plus the the level of microbiologicals are are a little over the place. You know, like obviously when you're growing sure. in living soils, you're naturally going to have high levels of, of my, micro micro microbials. Um, but then under pharmaceutical standards, you can't go higher than than you know you're 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 very limited as to what microbials you can have. Um, and so that that's been one of the biggest challenges for us, definitely. It, it that is it is, and I think that that's I I think it you know when I remember when they started going hey we're gonna go medical, um, uh-huh. I started thinking like how, you know, <laughs> like how are you know I understand and that was the kind of the the spear that poked the hole that opened up the cannabis markets, and now I for me I have a hard time understanding how you can have a regulated product that's medical and recreational and you know you're you're expecting this level to be the medical to be at xyz and yet you you can still use this recreationally over here i mean why would you ever right why would you ever go for the medical although the i mean the value is there i get it but i just feel i, I right. find it very interesting that <clears throat> i don't know this is the first time but it's the only time that i'm aware of that we're taking a plant and trying to force it into a pharmaceutical box and going, hey, you know, and then, you know, all the other stuff around it, like dosing. I mean, that's been a big deal. It is an issue. I mean, how, yeah. do, you, how do you quantify dosing and get that correct and, and all those things, which are challenges? Absolutely. Um, For sure. Not if you're recreational. I mean, you get what you get and you don't say shit. Right. But if you're right. medical, you really need to know. Yeah. And I get it. I mean, you know, I want to have a have a bad experience because um, somebody didn't calculate that correctly. Uh, you know, right. <laughs> so, for sure. For sure. And I, I think, uh, think yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, like, yeah, patients um, need to be given that uh, the liberty to choose what they want to consume, you know, whether they want to grow their own medicine 
or they want to buy a product that's um, you know like the, the Californian model where they can just go into a dispensary and, and choose a product and they know that it's 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 under some certain kind of standards and safety standards yeah. or they can go to a, a doctor and, and you know get a, a prescription and, and get a pharmaceutical type product but there needs to be like the whole kind of all the different options and, and patients need to be able to it's choose they so can't be just restricted to the most yeah the, mo- the most most expensive and 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 uh uh, you know, toughest product to, to, to make as a pharma product. It's, it's, uh, it's so much, it's so much difficult, excuse me. There's so much difficulty in that. And I find that to be really interesting that we're having to deal with that, those varying levels of, uh, and I, and I, that's where I feel very, very, very fortunate. Right. Um, I do build equipment to like, you know, food safe lab grade, you know, we're at, we're, we, we do the best of the best just because, we don't know yep. what regulatory problems my comp my, my, my customers are going to have, so we're yep. just saying, okay, well, we're going to build it way up here, and that's right. it, and uh, and yeah. and it's been good for us so far. Um, but you know, as a as a cannabis company, I mean, if you do everything way up there, you you can't really sell to this market over here with it, right? Because it costs so much more to produce at this level. It's a different conversation. Sure. Like you can't say I'm going to grow all my recreational crop at medical grade levels. That doesn't. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not going to support it at the end of the day. No you way. Know? Yeah. Um, so, so are you, are you greenhousing in, in, in what is what you guys are doing greenhouse or? Yeah, we got a greenhouse, so we just built our, our first greenhouse uh, for the THC production. Um, it's around 500 yeah. square meters, um, and it's uh, it's actually a Brazilian greenhouse that we imported. Um, and yeah. so we have some supplemental light, but you know, obviously, just uh, we using uh, we did our first cycle now in the, the summertime here in Uruguay. Uh, we're going to try to do another um, another cycle later this year. We, you know, obviously, going to try and maximize how much we can get out of that greenhouse and. We'll have to do some modifications, sure. um, maybe do some like light depth, blackout stuff uh, if we want to do uh, some other cycles during the year. Because naturally speaking, the Uruguayan summer, um, I mean, Uruguayan climate, most people can only get one cycle out during the year, especially if you're doing outdoor or, or very simple kind of right? um, tunnel tunnel type greenhouse. Yeah. Plus, you got to be really careful because it's, it's really humid. Um and the rains, wow. the, the sort of autumn rains come in soon. Actually, last year, everyone got nailed because it, we had like 10 days of rain at harvest time. Oh so it just it literally like destroyed everything. So it's it's not that easy to grow in, in Uruguay. Plus, the costs of production um, are also not, not, you know, not so friendly. Uh, and that's why a lot of people, yeah. uh, or ourselves included, where we're looking now to kind of see maybe diversify production places like Colombia where we can produce actually um, a lot more economically and we can get a few cycles out during the year with just, you know, the natural climate that it has there being so close to the equator. Um, So I think we're going to see a lot of that, you know, kind of shifting around um, geographic immensity to kind of take advantage of those, uh, uh, you know, the costs, um, the climates, obviously the regulations is a, is a big part as well. So uh, just a quick funny story about uh, Colombia. Uh, we had a guy order a, one of a machine from us, and he's like, "Yeah, send it to Escobar," and gave us a, a, a highway, Highway 105. <laughs> I'm like, "What? <laughs> this is I'm, I, I'm I'm pretty sure Escobar is probably a really popular name, right? But you know, <laughs> given given what I know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing right now, man. Am I gonna ship this thing? And it's going to a highway. It's not even an address. I don't understand." Uh, turned out to be just fine, obviously, but uh, it was right. kind of funny. Like that moment you get that order, like, oh, all right, uh, which <laughs> kind of ties into the, like, you know, I mean, the cultural kind of thought process around what cannabis is and and the negativity yep. and the stigmatisms and all that stuff, man. It, um, it, you know, power to you for for what you're doing and breaking that down, and 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 uh, you and your wife and, and what you guys are creating down there. And I think that's really important. And I mean, as a company, we don't really, we're not cultural, you know, we're, we're equipment side, so we don't really see that opportunity very often. But um, you guys are on the front lines on that stigmatism and negativity. And especially in South America, you're going to, you're going to see uh, probably even a little bit different perspective since you guys have been the bad guys for a long time right. <laughs> from the United States perspective, yeah. uh, while we're paying you right. and importing on one hand and, and punishing and, you know, on the other hand, whatever. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I think it's uh, it's a, just a cultural mind shift, right? I mean, like I'm thinking about going to Columbia because I want to go, a because it's beautiful, stunning down there. But also, I mean, we yep. have a 
we have a, a couple of great partners down there uh, who have our equipment, and we just, you know, it's the whole thing of going down and seeing how another, you know, culture and country is implementing and, and using your product and understanding what's going on with how they're dealing with this new industry and all that stuff. I mean, it gets to be really interesting. Um, we just went, I did not go, my, my, I sent my team down to, um, to, to, I said, yeah. to, um, Costa Rica for the show down in Costa Rica. And, uh-huh. you know, um, they still didn't pass legalization yet. They, they said they were going to, and everybody who was running for office wants it to, but nobody's done it. So it's like, ah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, you know, but that's, you just don't know, right? That's the thing. Right. Planning, working, right. getting, trying to figure it out. And as you guys are doing, planning, working, trying to figure out how you're going to do the next step in your business to make everything successful is, you know, those are the challenges of business, right? That's, for sure. That's for all sure. it is. Uh, just keep doing totally. it, right? Yeah. Keep working, keep pushing the board. Yeah, so, yeah. Wow. Just hopefully, uh, hopefully it works out. Hopefully, we, we get through this this this, this challenging period, and uh, you know we can look back in in twenty years and you know laugh and uh, just kind of enjoy about those those roller coaster moments, those right. challenging moments, and yeah, um, and and just hope that one day at least I'll be able to access some product here in in, in Uruguay and not have to smuggle yeah. stuff in from from California and uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes for- <laughs> It's yeah, so crazy, it's crazy, man. I, I've been in this industry since, uh, since you know, that's what you were doing. We were, you know, people would ship stuff across and be very, very uh, creative in how they ship stuff from coast to coast. Right. <laughs> to, yeah. I had my my first, uh, 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 what was it, the uh, uh, collective. I had a collective. I had uh-huh. people's cards. Yep. And was, yeah. Yeah. And, and then from there, right. uh, I got out of growing because I wasn't very good at it. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What a deal, man! It's been a really interesting short period of time, yeah. But yeah, it's really cool. yeah. And I think that in the end, that's like you look back at it, and, and you know, right now it seems like everything just takes so long, and you know, things to change and regulations to change. But really, it, in the grand big uh, scheme of things, it, it's not that you know uh, long. And we'll look back after and say, like, "Wow, that everything just changed so quickly," and it will. Uh, yeah. You know, I think things are, are moving rapidly, but it's 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 about you know hindsight in that in that regards. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, the, the unfortunate thing is that when you're in it, it's hard to understand it, but ultimately right. it, it just is about keeping, um, keeping your, you know, your nose down and keep going and, and working through it. So, um, yep. Apologize. I got distracted. I got a text coming in. I got another, I got a customer coming who came in from, from, uh, another state and they're like, ah, I'm like, Hey, no, I have this locked out man. just relax. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. Yeah, but you know yeah, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just multi constant multitasking, huh? Oh my god, it never ends, man. It never ends. Yeah. I go home, I put my phone in the other room, and you know, and try yeah. and run away. <laughs> For sure, it, I think I think that's uh, that's probably one of the most important things working in this industry is just being able to kind of disconnect and take a step out and, and look back in. You know, I think because we're so used to being like completely engulfed by by everything by constant problems putting out fires all the time and you don't really actually see the progress that you're making sometimes because yeah. you're just like too in it yeah. um and it, that's what cannabis hard, helps, right the consumption of cannabis yeah. just kind of uh, takes you out of there sometimes and gives you a different perspective and in, in, in you know as you as you go farther down this you start running into people that um remind you of the history right mm-hmm. like oh yeah, don't you remember? And you're like, oh yeah, I I have gone a long way. <laughs> right. You know, we have we've done something. Oh, good. Yes, sir. I feel like I'm okay now. I, I accomplished something in my life, right? Instead of just like right. grind, grind, grind. You know. Uh, so, but yeah. but that's how, that's how I feel anyway. I know I get to run into guys like I had met ten years ago at a trade show or something, or actually about nine years ago would be the earliest trade show, and uh, you're yeah. just like, oh wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that that moment, that one place, and you know, yeah. remember all the struggles that you were dealing with then. And all, anyway, whatever. It's 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 kind of refreshing. The struggles still continue, but they're different. You know, as you grow and mature, For sure. and the things I yeah. used to worry about, I don't worry about anymore. Obviously, so right. which might be a good lesson for the future, right? But I, I'm not a, I'm not applying it. <laughs> <laughs> I still worry about everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's still a lot to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the, uh, the guest, the hotel concept is, and that's coming along. Cause I know that you had mentioned that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, I mean, you know, the, the house is there, it's ready. Uh, we don't really have to do too much to it. It's amazing, beautiful house. It's like 
800 square meters. I'm sorry. I know you guys talk in uh, kind of miles and, and that stuff, and I, I, I can never uh, figure yeah, that out. Have, when we I was have, we in, have in the, the US. wrong number, that's for sure. Right, right. But it's a uh, it's beautiful home, um, you know, fully equipped. There's four bedrooms with bathrooms and suites. And, you know, the idea is to turn that into a, a little boutique hotel and a really nice restaurant there. Um, we want to get that going in, in December this year because that's kind of when the season, the summer season starts and a lot of people come in from, from Argentina, from Brazil. Uh, and the area where it's located is very kind of trendy for, for tourists. We have one of the most famous wineries um, actually right really? next door us. Uh, yeah, and we're, we're actually talking with them about kind of bringing in groups from them to have a bit of a, a cannabis experience. You know, they come over, have a, yeah. an asado, which is, you know, like a, a Uruguayan Latin American barbecue. Um, and then, you know, have smoke some, some cannabis, maybe have some edibles, um, you know, just kind of have a bit of a tour of the, the, the greenhouse, right. um, just because, you know, most people here haven't never experienced anything like that before. It's, it's totally right. new. Um, and so, yeah, we're looking to open that up end of the year. Uh, we're also doing a few little events, uh, corporate retreats also coming over, you know, and kind of just doing very something cool. very different, uh, kind of focus on the wellness um you know the meditation side of things which is which is really interesting so a bit of work to do there i mean it's a kind of a whole other business line so you know kind of got to take our head now out of the yeah cultivation and production side of it. and all of a sudden we're i don't know <laughs> uh, hospitality experts which we're not you know we've got no idea yeah. about that so i don't know we're trying to find I mean, uh, the right you know, people somebody... <laughs> When somebody tells me they're starting like three businesses at once and they're in multiple different countries and and put them all together I go, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. You're busy. I, yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> you got a couple of hats yeah. to wear. <laughs> right, right. And yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's what sometimes makes it so challenging. It's like, you know, obviously the, your, the kind of wisdom says that you've got to focus, you know, focus to one little thing, focus on one thing and do it well. Um, but with cannabis, mm -hmm. it's like, you've got to kind of, I don't know, we're still, still figuring it out, figure out what works, uh, yeah. figure out what's going to make money. you got to move fast, um, too. Yeah, move fast and adapt and, and try things, pilot things, and uh, just hope that we've got a, enough runway to kind of you know get us there to the point where we start kind of creating some, you know, just getting some consistent revenue, um, just in, you know, in returns. But, yeah. But we're, we're getting yeah, there. We're getting that. there. We got a, We got a great team. <laughs> yeah, great team and uh, you know, good, good, great investors. Um, and uh, you know, we're 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 our philosophy is really all about just trying to keep it lean um our team is really small we're only yeah. eight of us and, and we're all doing wearing multiple hats you know um so you know whereas we've seen a lot what's one of the biggest mistakes in the cannabis industry is just when you know companies have had cash thrown at them and they just kind of you know burn it super quickly yeah um and yeah. it's just happened burn over and right over again through. and obviously yeah we're, we're trying really hard not to make that that same mistake and um just just keeping up keeping ourselves super agile that we can, you know, adapt and quickly to to any regulatory changes yeah. that, that do happen, um, and and yeah, just keep things super lean. So hopefully that you know, yeah. works out. That's great. It's great. That's the only way to fly, man. We we did all of our stuff without that extra money, and we've learned a lot of hard lessons. But I'll tell you what, um, yeah. you know, those are the lessons that make you strong. You know what I mean? And and uh, this time is a special time because I mean, when it goes and it goes that next level, you're going to be you're going to be supplanted. Like a lot of the duties you do are going to go to other people. And that's a kind of this mind fuck of itself. It's just like, ah, what do I got to die? I used to, I, I, I don't even know what to, I don't know what to do. You know, I find myself in that spot. Now I go out on my floor. It's all run by people who are very intelligent, very talented. Mm -hmm. The company runs really smoothly. And, uh, and I'm like, I don't, Maybe I'll just go back to my office. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, yeah. There's plenty of uh, stuff for me to worry about. But uh, yeah, it, once sure. that change, that change is coming. <laughs> oh, I, I dream seven. of that day. I, I, I'm yeah. dreaming of that day right now where I can just hang out in my office and just let everything kind of run itself. <laughs> run itself. Yeah. 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 It never really completely does, but it, it, at least you get away right. from it. But anyway, for sure. listen, I mean, for thank sure. you so much. I appreciate all the time. I, I know how valuable time is and uh it sounds yeah. like you guys got a lot of exciting stuff going on do you have web presence and social and stuff like that yeah yeah we do uh our website uh evlifesciences.com we actually just launched a new website literally last week um so that's fully updated with with everything we're doing um we're also on instagram linkedin and, and facebook ev life sciences um we're there so yeah we'd love to hear from you guys um awesome. and uh really looking forward to trying the uh um, the, the green bows trimming machine in our upcoming harvest in April, I'll, I'll 
definitely make make sure to send you guys some photos of that. Um, it's a really cool facility Wonderful. that we've got there. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah we'd reach love out. to we've have you guys. Great- Oh, we'd love to come down. My wife loves wine. So, I mean, that might be a great, great opportunity seeing as you're Perfect. next to a winery. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be some of the first uh, guests at our uh, uh, boutique hotel. Oh, there you, there you go. There you go. Um, mm-hmm. Don't, uh, don't, no, don't neglect. We have our, our customer support. We got a great service guy and we can help you guys out. If you have any questions with the stuff you're using, whatever, we can help you with that. And, and um, you know, lots of lessons Perfect. learned over the time. So uh, don't, don't be afraid to reach out for that. And, um, Great. yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, this is basically a conversation. If you had anything else you wanted to throw in there, uh, you know, now's the time. No, all good. Yeah, I really enjoyed that conversation, Cullen. Thanks so much for the invitation. And, uh, yeah, yeah look forward for to, sure. to keeping in touch. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining this week's podcast. You can check us out at greenbros.com and all the socials at greenbros.com.